Hello, everyone. Good evening. Take a hymn book and turn to page 379. I need thee every hour for my prayer tonight. All right, so I want to sing a little bit about such things. Tell it to Jesus alone. 
Tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus. He is a friend that's well known. There's no other such a friend or brother. Tell it to Jesus alone. Do you feel the gathering clouds of sorrow? Tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus. Are you anxious? Watch me tomorrow. Tell it to Jesus alone. Tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus. He is a friend that's well known. There's no other such a friend or brother. Tell it to Jesus alone. Are you troubled at the time? Tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus. For Christ coming, kingdom are you sighing? Tell it to Jesus alone. Tell it to Jesus, tell it to Jesus. He is a friend that's well known. There's no other such a friend or brother. Tell it to Jesus alone. You know, I have a testimony with that song, that last verse. When I was a kid, I think it was right before I got saved, I was greatly fearing dying. I was afraid of death, uh, afraid of hell. And uh, I I just, uh, I remember thinking, I, I don't know if I really absolutely prayed, but I remember thinking, God, I don't want to be scared like this anymore, and I don't, I don't know what to do, and can you, can you help me? And I went to church that day, or that next day, or right close to there, and we sang this song, and that last verse, Are you troubled at the thought of dying? Tell it to Jesus. We sang that, and, and God just is like God told me, it's going to be all right. And I think it was right after that probably within a week or two that I got saved. And God, uh, listen, God is our place of refuge, our tower. That's what I'm preaching mm -hmm. on tonight. And so, um, uh, and he wants to be there for you. And so, mm -hmm. all right, uh, just wanted to mention that. Now, uh, tonight is Wednesday night, but as always, give us your prayer requests. And... Uh, uh, Oh, you're right. <laughs> I forgot to write the date on the board. <laughs> I knew I forgot to write the date. What is the date? 24th? Oh. Yeah. Oh, no. Adrian, I got to fix that. 24th, yeah. Oh, am, I, am I late or what? <laughs> there we go. All right. Um, I'll just erase this one. Thank you for that, folks. Okay, that'd be good enough. All right, I appreciate that. <laughs> good job. Keep me on my toes. All right, um, uh, but at any rate, uh, give us your prayer request if you have any, and uh, <laughs> and um, I, I want to ask you, you know, I, I started driving the bus again yesterday with the Missboro School, and uh, that's a crazy world we live in, uh, crazy times, hard times, and uh, I want to ask you to, to pray for Miss Calero, pray for the school, the staff, for the kids. Um, that things will go well, and, and I think we need to keep them in prayer. Keep each other in your prayers, and um, uh, and that's what we're talking about tonight is prayer. We need to pray. We need to pray. We need to pray. And so, all right. Um, <laughs> all right. I don't think we have too many announcements and all of that. Let's get on to our last song, which is page 383, I believe. 
which is how firm a foundation All right, been talking about a quiet place. This is part three. If you hadn't caught the, the other ones, then uh, get on there and go back and find parts one and two. I think it'll help you. Uh, I realized we need prayer, and I needed this sermon as much as anybody. Truth is, I don't think any of us pray enough. Uh, that's the reality, and I'm included. And I, I did it uh, partly to preach to myself, to get to... Uh, to remind myself I need to get on the ball and do that. And uh, and so uh, every Christian needs a quiet place, okay, uh, uh, to get alone with God and get a hold of God and get to know him and get the answers that we need. Um, a place to pray uh, and fellowship with Almighty God, okay? Uh, but it won't happen by accident, okay? A quiet place, a prayer closet uh, or bed or whatever, you know, a place that you can just be with the Lord. It won't happen unless uh, you do your part, okay? It won't, ha it won't just happen by accident. You've got to get yourself a place, a prayer place, a place to get alone and get quiet, a place where it's just you and no distractions. And then do you, and you got to do your part. To get there, uh, okay, you, you get that place, um, uh, and then you do your part to get yourself there regularly and mean business with God, and then he will do his part. Now, that's part, my message is parts one and two. You do your part, God will do his part, and his part is he'll bar the devil from getting in. He'll shut and lock the door, and the devil won't be able to get in that place. It'll just be you and God, uh, and then God will show up. He'll be there uh, sooner or later. Now, there's times when you may not feel or see or sense he's there, and uh, but uh, but he is, and uh, but he, but but sooner or later he'll show up and you'll know he's there, and uh, he'll be your constant high tower. In fact, let's just read verses one um, and two this evening. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. This is David talking. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer and my God, my strength in whom I will trust, my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high power. Okay, now 
uh, <clears throat> he's our high tower. He's our, our tower, our place of peace, of rest, of refuge, okay, of comfort, of whatever you need. That's what he is. Okay, now tonight I want to... I, I was going to wrap this up tonight, but it looks like I'll probably wrap it up next week. <laughs> so, uh, but I want to, I want to, uh, we, we talked about doing your part and then God will do his part. And, uh, and tonight we want to talk about some helpful suggestions to proper praying. Okay. Uh, just, just, just some things to help us to pray rightly, uh, to, to get things in, uh, in a little bit of order and, uh, um, uh, and to do it right, okay? Now, he, the Lord Jesus, is your quiet place. It isn't just, just a place, but he is your place. He is the tower, okay? Your high tower, as we just read. Uh, you come to the high tower, all right? Didn't you come for a reason? D don't you want to see God? I mean to 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 sense he's there to to see him working to don't don't you want to visit with him or or did you just come to ask for something and then get out of there see what you can get from him but you don't need him don't you wouldn't you rather don't you want to get get alone and just get with him and just spend some time with him uh, husbands do you want to spend time with your wife or you just want to get what you can get from him? Oh, Pastor Randy, oh, yeah, I'm, that's what I'm talking about. You just out to get what you can get? Or you want to spend time and be with her, okay? Uh, or your husband, ladies, or your kids, or your, or your parents, okay, for the kids. Uh, uh, you come there, don't you want to visit with them? When you begin to pray, just start where you are, okay? Uh, you you go to that place, that quiet place, and you get to that uh, to the tower and start where you are at the bottom. A tower is a high structure, isn't it? All right. I want you to I want you to think about that a little bit. When you get there, you're down at the bottom. Okay. He's God. We are flesh. He's holy. We are sinful. He and his ways and his thoughts are high above ours, as far uh, as high above ours, as far as the heavens are high above the earth. And we're talking about the outer space heavens. We're talking about the heavens uh, or the heaven itself where God is. All right. Uh, as high as it is above the earth, jump however high you want to. You ain't going to get to any planet or any star. We are down here and we're feeble and we're lowly and we're we're nothing <laughs> really. And he's everything. All right, so so think about that a little bit. And he's our high tower, and it's a high tower, and we just we're we're down there, down there at the bottom. Okay, we couldn't possibly reach up or jump up or get ourselves up to him. But by God's grace and Christ's work through the cross, and by his Holy Spirit, we can come to the Lord. Amen. He made a way for that to happen. We can come and be with him and visit with him and get to know him and get face to face with him, okay? And have him working in our lives and have him uh, 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 showing himself and doing things uh, for us and to us individually and directly. Right, so, so he tells us to pray. He asks us and encourages us and compels us. Pray, I want you to pray to me. I want you. The word prayer actually, does anybody remember what it means? It means ask. That's right. The word prayer simply means ask. Well, God wants us to ask. All right, a parent wants to do things for their kids, but sometimes they there are things, certain things they want the kids to ask for it. We had a pastor when I was a kid. He would never let one of his son or daughter, one of their friends, come and ask him if they could come over. He'd make his kids. He'd say, no, no, no. They've got to, my kids got to come ask me if they can have a friend over. 
Okay. And, and, but God wants us to ask. So he tells us to pray. The Bible says in James, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. That's a good verse. And it's true. How many of you have experienced that? How many of you have prayed such a, such a righteous and fervent and earnest prayer that it did something? And you know it. If you're saved, it happened at least once. You ask God to save you, forgive you, and save you, and he did. And oh, wow, how wonderful that was. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. In other words, it does much good. It accomplishes the impossible. Okay? What is the impossible? Having a real relationship with God. Having fellowship with God. Okay? That's, that's impossible. Ask any lost person if they have fellowship with God. They'll think you're nuts. <laughs> they'll, they'll call you crazy. They'll say, and even if they do try to, you know, say yeah or whatever, they they'll they'll they don't know what they're talking about. They don't have it. To have friendship with God. Just to have a close relationship and close friendship with God. Now, I want you to look in Psalms 18, verse 6. For a little note here, he says, In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried unto my God. He heard my voice out of his temple, and my cry came before him, even into his ears. Now, David is talking here, and he said, I cried unto the Lord, and he heard me. He, he, my cries came unto, into his ears when I called upon him. When, when the little child whimpers, When the little baby or the little child whimpers, mom's busy and she's doing around and she hears it, but she doesn't think much of it. Ah, oh, he'll be all right. Okay? She hardly notices and, and doesn't move or do anything uh, about it. But when he cries out, okay, when when he cries out, uh, straining every nerve and his, and his voice goes as high as it can be and he screams out for his hurt or his need, Mom throws aside, uh, she's going to throw aside all else to come and comfort and calm the little fella, okay? Uh, even perhaps give him the thing that he desires or needs. Why? Because he cried out until she heard him, until his cries got into her ears. That's what God wants us to do. Have you ever cried out from the heart with such intense, earnest, fervent prayer in agony or pain or need or, or, or distress, to, so much so that you had to get a hold of God, that you was willing to do whatever it takes? You see, people, even Christians, spend their whole lives and never know what a relationship with God really is because they never really get a hold of Him. They ne other than needs being met here and there and and this you know here at times you know some little prayer seem to be answered or whatever they, they don't know what it's like to have a relationship with him where he's there and he's real and he's good and he and he listens and hears them and comes running to help them and be with them they don't they maybe they've never truly cried out until they got a hold of him until he heard them that's what God wants us to do with him. He's the high tower, okay? Now, think about it. If you're down here at the bottom and he's up there at the top, if you will, uh, when, uh, when you're, you're at the bottom, he's at the top, okay? Uh, think about that. So when you get there, begin, what do you do? You begin climbing up, don't you? Step by step, by step, by step. How many steps are there? When I was just out of high school a couple of years, I worked construction. Uh, we worked five weeks in Longview, Texas at the Kodak uh, plant where they made the film for the Kodak cameras and all that back then. And uh, in this plant, 
they were building a structure that was identical to one that was next to it. Now they had built the structure, but we had to do the work of, of the fittings and the instruments that went on that structure. And uh, I was the helper. So that means every bracket and every, you know, cutting and making and getting, getting them welded, you know, and taking care of and making these things and getting them up there and getting all the tools that we needed and all of that. I had to get them up there. Guess what? It was a 210 foot structure. No elevator, only stairs. Okay. And guess what level we worked on nearly the whole time? The second to the highest level, we worked on the highest level for about one week, but the rest of the time we was on the second to the highest level. I counted getting up to the second to the highest level was 32 flights of stairs. Not 32 stairs. I think there was two or 300 and something stairs, but there was 32 flights of stairs with no... In long... Texas, it was in July and August when I worked there. In Longview, Texas, at that time, they said on the national news, the hottest spot in America was Longview, Texas. It was 110, 15 degrees every day. And we were working with stainless steel and iron and metal. My hands got so tough, you wouldn't believe it now because they're so soft and wimpy. But they got so tough that I could pick up that hot stuff and go and, you know, get it cut and marked and welded together and all that stuff up there and i'd get up there and boy we forgot the bolts or something or we needed some tool and they'd say you need to go down there and get them and i mean every day i must have climbed them stairs a hundred times ah uh, that was a tower let me tell you what okay and uh, uh i i remember there's 32 flights of stairs because i remember counting them so many times and so to ascend, to, to climb up, to go, you got to start at the bottom and start climbing. And so here's the starting place for climbing the tower and getting toward Jesus. If he's up at the top and you're at the bottom, when you first get to your quiet place, it, it may not be that you're very close to him and you need to get there. Okay. So the starting place to start climbing is praise. Okay. Look in verse 3 at what it says i will call upon the lord who is worthy to be praised so shall i be saved from mine enemies uh, i'm gonna call on the lord he's worthy to be praised now remember do you remember what the difference in praise and thanks being thankful or thanksgiving is anybody remember do you remember the difference between praise and thanksgiving Any idea you want to tell you? <laughs> That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Praise is talking to God, telling God, exalting him for who he is. Thanksgiving is being thankful, grateful for what he has done for you. Okay? And at the beginning of this psalm, he says, I will Call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. I'm going to call on him. I'm going to praise him. Listen, the starting place, I think, is to praise God. Uh, the Lord's Prayer, where God taught us the pattern of praying. He said, start it out with our Father which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Okay, Hallowed, holy be thy name. Uh, I, I'm going to exalt your name. I'm going to praise your name. See, that's the starting place. You won't go wrong by bragging on you never go wrong by bragging on God, by telling him how great he is. Okay, now listen, it's not going to puff up his head. He's the one who actually is great. There's no perfect person in the world. So all of us down here, no matter how great you are at something, there, there's usually someone better at that anyways. And But whatever the case, we don't have a right to say I'm the best or I'm the greatest. But God does. And he is worthy. He is deserving of all praise. He's God. He is perfect. He is the greatest. So acknowledge and recognize that he is everything and that you're nothing. Praise him. Give him the credit. Give him the glory. Okay? And it'll go a long ways, especially if you really mean it. 
now the, this flattering business you know I'm, I'm coming here to get something so i'm secretly you know i'm going to say all these good things about him so that he can give me something god knows your heart and he's on to you before and you that may not work but you really mean it god you're everything i'm nothing and exalt him and praise him that's what david did all the way through this psalm okay just about we may get to some of that next week but uh, but exalt him and praise him and see that so, so praise, it, it gets you climbing the tower a little bit. And that brings us to our next sub, sub point, okay? We, we said, God, you're everything and I'm nothing. Well, if I'm nothing but a sinful man, then the next thing I need to do is what? Confess, repent, okay? So praise him gets you climbing the stairs, recognizing who he is. I, you're the one I'm talking to. You're the one I'm coming to see. You're the one who's great. That's why I'm coming to see you. But I'm coming to see you. Uh, I'm not so great. Uh, I'm a mess. I've got sins. I've done wrong. I, I hear or I know that you're the God that accepts people who've done wrong, who, who can forgive, who can, who can cleanse, who can restore, who can bless confess those things don't you think or, or don't think you'll ever get anywhere in prayer okay that you'll get any higher up in that tower by believing you haven't sinned okay you say well i i can't recall anything i i, I don't know of anything i've done bad today i've tried to live a good and righteous life i'll bet you at minimum we, we come short at minimum of doing what we should do. There, there's plenty of things that we ought to do that we don't end up doing or we don't do a good enough job of it, okay? Uh, G, James uh, said, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin, James 4.17. And sometimes we forget that. We think, we think uh, the only things that are sins is things that I do that I shouldn't do. You know, I'm not supposed to lie. I'm not supposed to cheat. I'm not supposed to steal. I'm not supposed to, you know, lust or whatever. I, I, I'm not supposed And But I didn't do any of those things. But it may be that you haven't done some of the good things, the things that God told you to do that you should do. Or you didn't do them with your, all your heart or whatever. We, we have sins that need confessing always and often. If uh, I don't think there's a one of us that goes a day without sinning okay and so the, the the next thing is to confess to to to, to repent and, and ask god to cleanse you forgive you of your sin and name them by the way be specific just the overall canvas of you know forgive me of all my sins doesn't really do the job it gets you out of it god forgive me of my sins now i want to get to the stuff i want no that isn't how you get a relationship with god uh, get it right is that how you do as parents you know your kids do wrong 10 times a day and, and every time they come to you and say uh, you know i'm sorry i shouldn't have done it now can i have this and can i have this and can i do that do you just give it to them okay you kind of apologize just give it to them no you know they ain't sincere you know they don't mean it you know they need to get it right for real they may need to be punished or whatever you see god god's the same way only he does a better job than us confess your sins okay uh, and there's plenty of ways that you've probably we, we've probably not only not done things we should do but there's plenty of things that we have done that we shouldn't have done wrong things thoughts things we've seen or or things we've said. How many of us Christians get in trouble with our mouth? Does your mouth ever judge somebody else? Does your mouth ever say something mean or hurtful or or against someone or or say something rude or whatever because you're in a bad mood or because you feel bad or you don't like somebody or something? We have so many sins. Confess those things, okay? um and and get them right when we sin we sin against god and his law okay and so just listen be honest god knows your sins anyways you want a good relationship with him go to him and be honest and confess your sins and just just say look i did this 
And in your own mind, it might be shameful or something you don't even want to think about. Say it, spell it out. God's not up there going, oh, I can't believe you did that. Don't, don't play that around me. You think God does that? God, no, he doesn't. He knows everything. And he wants you to come to him and confess it. Get it out in the open. And then say, I was wrong. I shouldn't have done it. I know you don't want me to do it. Will you please forgive me? If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's the promise from God. Listen to that promise and accept it and go to him and say it. Okay, he already knows everything. He already knows every thought, every intention, every word, every deed. Before you even say it or do it. So admit it. And reconcile. Get right with God. That'll go a long way in getting you higher in the tower and closer to him. So praising him is a good start. And then repent, okay, or confess is, is next. And then the third thing or the next thing is this. Forgive other people. Okay, no matter who it is or what they've done, forgive them. You say, I can't. If you are a child of God, God forgave you for everything and he didn't do anything wrong and you did everything against him. And he forgave you. And no matter what someone else has done to you, you can forgive them through Jesus Christ. If you can't possibly do it, you are not a Christian. You are not saved. Okay. Christians or non-Christians can't do it, by the way. They can't truly, completely forgive somebody because they don't have the Lord to do it through them or help them do it. Okay, But a child of God can forgive. And, and listen to me, uh, uh, God, you want to you, you, you wanna get into God's presence? You want to spend time with him and fellowship with him and have a good time with him? You can't get into his good graces and into his presence if you won't forgive people. Chances are, someone today did you wrong somehow. Said something or did something that chapped your hide or that hurt you. And they might even, when you see them or you're around them or you hear what they're saying, and they don't seem to care, they don't give a rip. In fact, they may even be just a... Uh, uh, arrogant and, and, and gloating about it or bragging about it or laughing about, about you or about it and, and, and all of that. You say, I won't forgive her. I'll never forgive her. Well, then, as the Bible says, God won't forgive you. You just stopped. You're going up the tower, but you won't get any higher than that. You won't get any closer to God than that. You're going to have to forgive them. You say, why should I forgive them? Why, until, they, until they repent, okay? Uh, I shouldn't have to forgive them if they don't want it. If they don't want God wants you to forgive them because he forgave you. Okay? Do you see that God wants a close, intimate relationship with you? He wants to bless you and do wonderful and mighty things with you. We hinder it all by our unwillingness to forgive. Besides, forgiveness frees you as much as it does the other person. It frees you from any responsibility, any hurt, any pain that they may cause or try to cause. And it frees them for God to work in their life. But if you've got unforgiveness, it clogs all of that up and messes them and you and everything else up. It doesn't do you any good. Okay? If you haven't been close to God in a long time, it might be that your heart is hard. Okay? That your hard unforgiving heart has kept you from God. Forgive people. You don't you don't know how, you don't understand, you don't think you can do it. Get with Pastor Randy and we'll take the scriptures and I'll teach you how to forgive people. Truly, completely to forgive. If you really want it, I'll show you how to do it. Okay?
Then there's another step. We're moving on up the tower. The next step is this. Seek protection from evil, from temptation and sin and evil. Okay? Now, this is a twofold uh, thing, really. Okay? Uh, let me, uh, Lord, let me walk close with you so that the devil and temptations and, and the wicked one, you know, the devil himself, so that they can't come near. If I'm walking close to you, so to, to you know, seek protection from evil is to seek a close walk with God. God, I want to be close to you so the devil won't come near to me because he ain't coming near to you. The devils have to flee from God. And so I want God to be right there with me, All right? Uh, remember, remember here a few weeks ago, my sermons on sobriety and godliness in Romans 13, uh, verses 12 and 13 says this, the night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness and not in all these bad things. Okay. How are you going to manage to avoid the wicked one and the wicked works of your own flesh that Satan is going to put before you and present to you and throw at you and tempt you with sometime during the day. How are you going to win that battle? How are you going to keep from giving in to temptation? I'll tell you how. You get up in the morning like I preached. You get up in the morning, you put off the night clothes, you put off the things of darkness and all that, and you put on the armor of light. You go to your tower, you go to the Lord, you say, God, I need you. I need your protection from the evil in this world, from the evil wicked one, from the devil, from sin, from temptation. Okay, I need you to keep me and help me when they come. God doesn't say, I'll protect you from being tempted. I'll so shelter and seclude you that you, you'll live a blissful life of, of perfect you know, peace and harmony and sinlessness. No, he says, you're going to be in the world. I'm just, I'm praying for you that when you're in the world, you'll be able to resist and or overcome temptation uh, and the wicked one while you're here. But it ain't going to happen if God isn't with you, if you don't go to him. And that's, that's what I'm getting at. You you get up and you you go out there and you take, you go out into the world, you go out your door, you take God with you. Okay, you go to him, go to your high tower, the Lord Jesus, you know, and get him and take him with you into the day. Doesn't it say uh, in the Lord's Prayer, um, uh, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Um, lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil or from the evil one, from the devil, you know, help us with this. That's what God wants us to do. Seek protection from evil. Now, now you're getting somewhere, okay? Uh, you've uh, you've uh, done these things. You've praised God and acknowledged and recognized him. You've repented and confessed your sins. Uh, you've, you've forgiven others. You have nothing between you and someone else, okay? We know the Bible says that if you forgive not uh, people, they're sins or trespasses and your father won't forgive you and you've done all that and you you've you've asked god to go with you through the day and protect you now the next thing is this now it's time to ask for things request okay prayer requests that's what we do that's what we say give us your prayer request so we can pray for these these ones these people you know, and, and I appreciate and I am willing to pray. If you want me to pray for someone, I'm willing to pray for them. But guess what? If it's your prayer request, you probably ought to be the one doing the most praying. And if you're doing the one that's most praying because you care for them or you know them or you're closer to that person or that, that need or that thing, are you right with God so that he hears your prayers? Are you not right with God? So you ask the pastor to pray because you think he's more spiritual and maybe his prayers will do more. <laughs> I mean, God wants us all to pray, but he wants us all to be right with God. And he wants us all to have a high tower, a quiet place, and to be able to get a hold of God and get the answers. 
And if we do all these other things, then when we get, when we start getting up higher in that tower, then pretty soon God's, God's going to be there and he's, he's ready to help us. Okay? Now let me say this. To just always begin your prayer selfishly asking for what you want is not going to work. Okay? And God probably won't hear you. Why? Because your sins have hid his face from you. Okay, that he will not hear you. You ask, what, what do I mean by that? Well, first, he should be praised and glorified by you. Okay, it's a needed humility that will help you. I need to acknowledge, I don't even deserve to be here. He is almighty God. I shouldn't even be able to allow it in his presence, but he's allowed, he allows me to come here. He asked me to come here. He wants to spend time with me, even as worthless and horrible as I am. Okay. And so, uh, but, and so there ought to be a humility or a humbleness that says, I, I don't deserve it, God, but you said you'd be here. And, uh, uh, and so, uh, and so we glorify him. I want to glorify you, God. You see, your pride is a sin and being humble is, is to help get that sin out of the way god forgive me of my pride and get that out of the way and uh, uh, uh what else do i mean by that second thing is this there ought to be repentance before request i i think that we ought to ask god forgive us our sin you know where we do wrong where we come so short of the glory of god and uh uh, and and make sure you get the sins out of the way. Get your sins out of the way so you'll get God's listening ear. It's a sin, by the way, to hang on to your sins and not confess them and and get get forgiveness and cleansing and all of that. All right? Uh, it's a sin to not face your sins and get them cleansed. And so. Your iniquities hide his face from you, and you can't get a hold of God. You wonder why you can't get a hold of him? That may be why. Here's a third reason, okay, uh, or a third thing I mean by that. If if there's any unforgiveness in your heart towards others, you got to deal with that. At the top of the list of things wrong in your life, uh, at the top of the list of things God deems necessary for you to deal with, at the top of the list of things that hinder your walk with God is unforgiveness. Why? Because it makes you angry or bitter or mean or judgmental and on and on and on and on. It, it brings all these other sins and wicked things into our life. Okay? Makes us do all kinds of things. And all these are sins against God. You you truly forgive that person who has hurt or devastated you the most. And there's a freedom that comes with that. And there's all these other sins and things that God will help you settle or situate or get right to. Uh, it's easier to not be judgmental of others when you know how sinful you really are. Okay? It's easy to, to not be angry at others when you know how <laughs> you deserve people to be mad at you. Okay? and But when you have unforgiveness, all of that stuff stays. But when you can forgive, boy, it'll it'll help um, with all of those uh, all of those things. Okay, and so uh, now a note here: there are occasions when it's necessary to cry out only suddenly for a request. Okay, I'm not saying you can never say, "Oh God, help me." Remember Peter when he was sinking down in the water? Okay, how long does it take? How many seconds does it take? To sink into the water. <laughs> Probably less than a second. I mean, if, if Peter's walking on water, if he started to sink, <laughs> I don't think he just started to sink, you know, going down. <laughs> I think it was, you you sink. I mean, you hit the water, okay? And uh, he said, Lord, save me. Well, he didn't need to say, oh, our Father in heaven, I just thank you for the things that you've done in my life and pray all the way through your whole life. No, he just needs, Lord, save me. There's times for that. Okay, I'm not saying you can't just ask God for stuff. But listen to me, you need to be right with God in order to do that. Okay? 
if your life is so full of sin, when that dire emergency suddenly happens to you or someone else, and you cry out, oh God, help me. Oh God, you got a remedy. Oh God, you got a you got a work here. It's an emergency. It's a sudden thing. My child has just been in a car wreck or something. Are you going to wait till that time to try to go to the high tower and climb up and get your sins right and get right with God and get close enough to Him where He'll hear you? It's awfully hard to get God's listening ear to get His help if there's so many sins clogging up his ears that he can't hear you. Sometimes, now sometimes in that emergency situation, that hard situation, sometimes God blesses in spite of you for his own purpose or because he's so merciful. But it's not that you were on praying ground or that he answered your prayer. He might have answered somebody else's prayer. He might have just saw fit to be merciful and kind and get you or get that person out of that thing take care of it I don't know okay that's why it's best to get and keep yourself right with God at all times so sincerely get your relationship get close to him and keep it there okay keep these things right and you'll, when, if you do these things, you're going to find God will be right there with you. So much of the time, you'll know he's there. You'll, you'll sense it. You'll feel it. You can't explain it. No, it's, it, it may not be for anybody else, and they may not understand, but you'll know it. See, then your loving father will say something like this. All right, now, my child, is there anything you want? Is there anything I can do for you? You say, God doesn't ask us those things because, boy, I'd tell him what I want and he probably wouldn't give it to me. Well, if you got that attitude, you ain't at that place where he's going to ask you to begin with. If, if you're at the place of humility and loving and adoring him and worshiping him and, and you've got your sins taken care of and you've forgiven others and you, all, all these things are right, then he knows he can trust you with that kind of question. What do you want? He knows you'll ask for something right and something good. He, you won't ask for something sinful or wrong. He knows that you'll ask in sincerity. He knows it'll be something you need. It'll be in the will of God. And he's obliged to do great things with you. Okay? What do you want? Then bring your prayer list to him. Okay? Bring out your prayer list. Do you have family and friends who have hearts that are hardened against God, who need to hear the word of God, pray for them. God will hear you. Do you have a uh, need of daily bread, the necessities of, of bills and things being paid? Then you're in that place where you pray and God will hear you. Is there a personal desire you have on your heart that, that is just something that, 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 that you so greatly want you see, if you pray in this place, you're going to pray in the will of God. You're going to pray according to the word of God, according to what's right. You're not going to be praying for something evil. Oh, God, I've been such a good servant of you. Now make me a rock star. No, how, how foolish. Okay? And, uh, but, uh, but you'll pray, God, whatever it is. God, please give me this thing. Maybe you'll cry out to God like David did. And maybe your cries will fill the ears of God. It depends on the way. And your relationship with others is taken care of and everything and things are right. And you're in that tower and you're, you're drawing closer to God. You're climbing that thing and you're getting on up there. <clears throat> your heavenly father is touched by your pain, sorrow, longing, desire, whatever. And he wants to bless you. He can't give you everything you ask and certainly not Certainly, most of the time, ain't going to give it to you immediately, okay? At least not very often. Once in a while, he will. Boom. There's times when you pray for them. Oh, God, I need, I don't know what I need. I need you to do something. I need you to show me whatever. Sometimes the phone will ring or you'll meet somebody or somebody will be there and, and God will take care of that thing. But often, 
He's wanting you to get into his presence. He's wanting to get to know you and you to get to know him. He's wanting uh, you to understand that uh, this isn't what you really need. You may need something else. And when he blesses you, it will be wonderful when he does, when he answers that prayer. Okay, miraculous. Or it'll be something even better than you wanted. I wanted that thing for so long, you say. But I finally, God never gave it to me. And then finally he gave me this. Oh, and I'm so glad I didn't get that. This is so much better. And he was right. But you're not going to get there if you don't go to that tower. And then the, my last point is this. And then I'll wrap it up. Thank him. Okay, let me go through the list real quick one more time. You want to climb the tower to get into the presence of God? You start at the bottom, start praising him. Then repent and confess your sin. Then make sure you forgive others. Okay, seek protection from evil. Then give your petition, your request. Ask for what you will ask for. All right. Oh, I missed a part on the last one. Let me get to the... the the last uh, point on your um, asking for things. Ask for God's power, his will, his presence, his help for growth and service. Okay? You need help serving God. You need help to grow. You need to grow first. Okay? You need to learn and know and experience God and his word. To understand what he wants for you, what he wants from you, what he wants you to do, what his word says is right, to know the difference in right and wrong, and to, to get to where you live and uh, apply that to your life and make it part of you and, and, and learn to walk with him and talk with him and grow and get stronger in the Lord. Just like a young man or a young lady from a child, from an infant or a baby to an infant, an infant to a, to, to a child, you know, and a, to a teenager, to, to an adult, and even a young adult and then a mature adult and on in the rest of your life. You, you grow and you mature. Some people take so long. I'm one of those people. I took forever. I was so immature. <laughs> and uh, I, I think I got there. I think I've gotten done all right, you know. And, and God wants that for you as a Christian. And don't think that just because I got saved, I ought to know everything or, or be at a certain place. God needs to get you there. But he wants you to get with him. And let him help you get there. Okay? So you need to grow. I believe it's good to learn. Oh, I'm at the wrong place. Okay? And so you need to you need to learn and grow. And uh, to grow mature in him. So that you can be free. So that you don't. Uh, uh, so that you can be strong. A strong Christian. Uh, being a strong Christian will bless you in two ways. One. You'll live happier with less stress, less worry, less regret, less mess, less of a messed up life. Okay? You'll be more happy because you ain't giving in to temptation and doing all these, you know, things you shouldn't all the time and feeling like you're worthless or you can't do anything or that God don't care or that you're disappointing him or whatever. Instead, you'll know he's not only working with you, but you'll know he's pleased with you. Boy, that goes a long ways. And number two, it'll bless you in this way. The stronger and more mature you are or become, the better you'll be able to genuinely witness to or help others for the Lord, in the Lord, or in the Word of God. It's true that you got to get the beam out of your own eye first. Then you can see better to help others with what's in their eye. And so God wants you to get busy and, uh, uh, and work on these things. Don't you want to make a difference for the Lord? Don't you want to please the Lord for your part? Wouldn't you like to make a difference for eternity in helping someone else, however small or great that may be? Listen, the Lord changed you and made such a difference in your life. Wouldn't you like to do something in return? Wouldn't you like to do something for others? Okay, now we come to the last point. Be thankful. Thank him. Look in verse 49 of this chapter. It's kind of a long chapter, actually. Verse 49 says, therefore, and this is at the end of the chapter, says, therefore will I give thanks 
unto thee, O Lord, amongst the heathen and sing praises unto thy name. So he started off with praise and he ends with thanksgiving, being thankful. Listen, I don't think it's a mistake that the thanks part is at the end. Okay? At the end of your prayer, I believe it's good to learn to go ahead and thank God for answering your prayer. You say, which prayer? The prayer you just prayed. <laughs> I went through all these things. I asked for his forgiveness. Lord, I thank you that you forgave me. You see what I mean? He already he just answered one of your prayers before he got done praying. You say, oh, I didn't feel that much better. You did if you meant it and you repented and you know 1 John 1, 9 that says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. By the time you come out of there, you'll say, I feel better. I've been cleansed. He's restored fellowship with him again. I got to spend some time with him. Oh, how good it was. It just got better and better. And the, the longer I was there, the closer I got, you know, with him and, and I enjoyed it. Thank you for answering my prayer. I, I tend to teach people nowadays when they pray to ask for salvation at the end of their prayer to say thank you for saving me. Why? Because thanks is for what God does for us. And if he helps us to forgive others, we ought to thank him for it. That's a big deal. If he helps us to overcome our sins and to get stronger and to grow and get mature, we ought to thank him for it. Okay? And so learn to go ahead and thank him at the end of your prayer. I think it's a good thing. You say, but I just prayed it. He ain't answered it yet. Maybe some of your requests and some of the things you've asked for, he hasn't answered them yet. Maybe some things you've been praying for for a long time. Thank him for it anyway. Listen to me. Real faith says, I believe in you so much, God, that I know you're going to answer it. Okay? I know you're going to take care of me, and I know you're going to handle all these things, and I know you're going to answer it. One way or another, in your way, in your time, I know you're going to do that. And I'm going to trust you for it. And I thank you for it. And if you think about it, didn't he already show up and reveal himself to you? That's something to be thankful for. Hasn't he answered your prayers before? That's something to be thankful for. Doesn't he bless you every day with so many things? That's something to be thankful for. Isn't there a list 10 miles long of things you should thank him for? I mean, can you run out of things to thank God for? I don't think we can. The list goes on and on, from the smallest things to the greatest things, from your past to the things he's going to do tomorrow. There, there, It's unlimited. Thank him for past blessings and answers, and thank him for the future ones. Now, that's my message tonight. Is your Christian life not what it should be? Perhaps it's because your prayer life ain't near what it should be. Maybe it's seriously time to get you a quiet place and learn to get yourself there every day and get with God and ascend the stairs. If there's 32 flights of stairs or 52 or 102, you say, I'm going to go, I'm going to start climbing up. Till I get up there where God is. And my affections and my mind is on the things of heaven. And I'm going to be up there closer to heaven than I am down here on earth. And uh, get up there where I can enjoy him. Not stay and live down here all the time. On the things on the earth. Okay. Get. Maybe it's time to get you a quiet place where you can go to the Lord Jesus the high tower, and find him to be everything that you need. And that's what we're going to try to talk about next week. He is everything that you could possibly need. And David brings that out in this long psalm. Okay, let's pray. Our Father, come to you tonight, and we just pray even now. Thank you, Lord, for forgiving us, for saving us. Lord, you are wonderful and great, mighty and powerful. Lord, you're not just an almighty, 
holy being. And you're not just God, but you're our God. And uh, uh, even greater than that, you, you, we get to call you our Father and have a, a loving relationship with you as parent and children. And uh, God, we know that you want everything that's best and good for us, and you want to do so much for us. I pray that you'd help us to go to you and let you do these things in our lives as only you can do, And but help us to do our part. And that if we'll do that, we know you'll do your part. And uh, teach us to pray rightly and better. And teach us to be thankful for everything and not complain and not worry and fuss and stress and fear, but to know that you've got it all in your hands and it's going to be all right. And uh, to get so close to you that we don't have any fears or worries about anything else. And just help us, God, more and more to be what we ought to be as Christians. Lord, for those who are lost, we pray, God, that you would save souls. Help them, Lord, to realize there is a place they can go to, which is Jesus Christ, and get salvation and forgiveness and eternal life and and uh, and all that. And, and then have uh, a God and Father for their own as well and a high tower in you. We love you now. Go with us. Uh, bless all those out there who hear this. We pray and ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All righty. Thank you very much. God bless. Have a good night. We'll see you when we see you. Pastor Randy, signing off. <laughs>